Oh. All right, so this is Leak Code 314, and this is the this is a medium level, medium difficulty question. Uh, binary tree in the vertical order. So let's say you have some tree, this is not a binary search tree, but let's say you have some values, some nodes, um, with values, I'm just gonna write the values there. And we have like eight, 10, three, six, and then seven. Here, that looks bad. Six, seven, and that one's a null. So you wanna go vertically, um, and actually six and seven are in the same spot. So when you're kind of thinking of drawing vertical lines this way, you'd see that three is on one, uh, should be by itself, eight should also be by itself, right? And then we're going down this way, and then five and six, let's just say that um, they're on top of each other, and then 10 is by itself, right? So we're returning is a list of uh, values, I guess a list of lists, right? So it would be like, in this case, uh, three, or this is our list of lists, right, three is by itself, and my eight is also by itself, and then five, six, and seven are by themselves, and then, oh wow, it just happens to be in order, which is nice, and then 10 is by itself. So that would be what we would return for um, this specific tree. Uh, yeah, so that's kind of the gist of the problem. And this was actually pretty similar to the um, right side order and like getting the, um, all the nodes in the same depth, right? So the idea is generally starting from the root, um, you can you can pretend there's like a, a column, I guess, and you'd start with zero or you could actually just start with an any ar arbitrary number, I think zero makes the most sense, right? So I'll do that in another color to make it easy to spot. So like zero, we'll go in here, zero. And then when we go left, we can subtract one or decrement one. And when we go right, we could increment one. Um, so let's say what, negative eight, minus one, at 10, or at one, right? It's crooked one. And then when we go from there, we can recurse out for new iteration. Um, there's two different implementations and actually, I think both work to satisfy like my my needs, but actually when you're running the test cases, I, I, I understood and I found out why one of them passes all test cases and the other one doesn't. Um, but yeah, let's just go with this. So here we have negative one, one, and then when we decrement one, because we're going left because of the seven, the right is nothing, right? So we decrement one and we go back to zero. Now we know that seven and five are in the same, which they should be the answer. For here as well, increment one to go to six, which is zero. And then decrement one to go to three, which is negative two. So now we can just group these together. We see that five, six, and seven are in one, so we can ignore those now. 10 is by itself, which is just one. Is at one, these are at zero, eight is by itself at negative one, three is by itself at negative two, right? So that makes sense. Um, and that's, I guess, how both of these problems work essentially. But so we're going to do a recursive method, and then I'll explain why it doesn't pass all the test cases, is because. For the test cases, they would want a specific ordering. And when you go in, a, in the recursive direction, it would only check the left side first always as best based on your implementation. I guess you could make it so that it checks the right side of the tree first. Um, yeah, I guess that's not very important. We'll just go with the um, iterative solution first. So let's say define Fine. B tree, B tree vert. Right, and then yeah, this is going to be an iterative solution. We're taking at a root, and an iterative solution here. Um, I think it would make sense to use a queue, 
right, starting from the top and then popping it based on the right and left values if the node is not null, um, and then pu pu pop it, pushing it back into the queue with either decrementing by one or um, incrementing by one. Decrementing it. Yeah. So, and then we would store this in like a dictionary. So I guess, yeah, you could just do dictionary like this. Key would be our, um, our column number, and then the values would be the values of the nodes, right? So in this case, one, eight, and so on and so forth. Uh, yeah, so let's initialize the default default dig first, v equals, and then you would just import default dig, right? And then you would use the list as an empty list as a, as a default value um, for this specific dictionary. And then you need a queue. So if not root, if not root, let's make sure it's recording. And you can see that, yeah. So if not root, return nothing. Otherwise, call q is equal to an array root, and we're starting at zero. All right? Yeah. So let's go while q. As long as there's something in there. Node column is equal to q dot pop. Pop left, right, Python. I think you can do pop left, but I, I'm i gonna pop from the index of zero. Yeah, I think pop left might work. Um, yeah, so we're taking, in this case, five out, and we have five's column number, so we need to add it onto our dictionary, right? So go d of call dot pend node.val and actually we need to check here first let me make sure I count this Don't forget. we need to first check if if the node is not in, if it's not none so in python just if node right then d and no devil. Whoa. Keep my call our pen no bell, and then we need to go left and right, right? So Q dot append. Node dot left plus call minus one and then q dot append node dot node dot right call plus one. All right, so our q in this case is going to be this, and then we'll do, I'm just gonna write the value. Five, zero, right, pop that out. So the five has a left and a right. So we pop that out, and then we update our dictionary. To have that column, which is zero, and then we're appending five into it. And then we, we add the left and right into our queue, which is eight, negative one, and then 10, 10, one. So it goes back, and then it goes to eight. Take this one out, say a negative one. No 
I'm gonna need space there actually. Negative one. We have an eight in it, and then I kind of know that that's gonna be the only one. But eight has two children as well, three and six. So we're gonna go minus one, which is three, negative two, and then plus one, which is six and zero, right? And then this is just, so this is an array. We're popping from the left side in the zeroth index. So we have eight in there, and then we pop this one. 10 also has one, or 10 has one child. So we, I don't know why I keep closing it. So we put one minus, one minus one, which is zero. So seven and zero, right? And then we put 10 and the next one, column one, I mean, and then three, Put that in there at negative two, six, seven, and they actually wanted this in in the in the order um, from in a sorted order from increasing um, sorted in an increasing way, right? So in the end, you could just do return. Like the keys, right? So you would do, ah, let's see, you need a list of that. So you just iterate through the keys, the sorted, iterate through the sorted keys. So you do list comprehension here. Um, hopefully you understand how that works. D of I for, let's do K, do K for K in sorted. D, which, and you can just do D dot, you can just do D. Uh, this would go just through the keys, right? You could also just do sorted D dot keys, which would be the columns we have, right? So we go negative two, negative one, one. So give us three, eight, five, six, seven, and then 10. Um, and then you need to close off the brackets. So this is how you would do code 314 in an iterative way um, using a queue. And the recursive approach, I think it's pretty simple, so we can actually go over that too. Yeah. I like the recursive way better, but it didn't pass the test cases. Um, yeah, so let's say we're given the same thing, same input, same root. Let me think about this. How did I do this? Yeah. So I think a root and a column. And then the column would be called somewhere. Oh, actually, no. We'll leave it up there. This is the main function, and then. We'll create a helper function. Right, so we still need a default dict. And then actually, yeah, okay. I'm gonna call our helper, this default dict. Now let's call it helper. Take the root. A dict and a column, which will be defaulted to zero. And then, similar to before, we just return d of k for k and sorted d. So that would be our main function. And then we could define our helper function here that will do this iter recursively. A root, so dictionary and the column number, right? So if not root, return. That's a terrible return. And then otherwise, we want to d of call dot append 
root dot bell. Right? And then now we can just recursively go left and right. But this is kind of where the problem lies, where I mentioned about the test cases. Uh, you would do helper root dot left d call minus one, right? So we went left. Same thing. D root dot right plus one, right? And then you wouldn't return anything because because all we're doing in this function is updating this dictionary that we're putting in. So this is kind of how this call stack would look like, right? So we initialize this default dict here, and then we're calling this helper function on the root, given that dictionary is input, and then a column number of zero. And then we're returning the values of this dictionary sorted by the, the keys. So this helper function is going to be called with five and zero, getting passed in here. Not root, root is, is not not, not null, right? So we're going to append this value with this column inside our dictionary, right? We have five, and then we're going to recursively call it on the left side, right? So we're starting here, and then now we're going here, right? We're calling, we're gonna go back up to call stack and then go to the right, but not yet. We're doing, we're, we're here first, we're on the left. So go to this right function, if not root, no, we want to append with this new column here. We go this, and we say eight. Now we're right here. We're going to go right, but we need still need to go left first, right? We need to finish the that depth of iteration. So we're at three now. If not root, no. Do you call the append values at negative two, and then we would add three, right? And then now we can go from here. We see that no, none, none. We turn here. We go back to eight, and now we're at six. So now we can do this. We're finally on a right node, and six is in zero. So we can pen that here. And it's it's just a matter of how it's ordered, I believe, or how, how it gets added onto here. Because some of the test cases were like they wanted the six before the five or. Things like that, and I noticed it would, it would work for the iter the iterative solution because it goes current node, left node, right node, and then it goes to the next. It goes layer by layer, as opposed to um, this recursive solution that goes one side and then another side. So that's kind of where the test cases. I think it's just an error with the test cases, honestly. Um, oh yeah, so this one doesn't pass all the test cases, but it, it passes most of them. But yeah, so back on the call stack. So we go to six, we got our first right node, zero, we add six, and then now we go up the call stack to five and then going right at the 10, which is at one, and then we add that there and close that out. And then we're at the seven, which is at the zero, and then we would have this solution. So actually in this case, we get the same ordering that we did. We got an iterative solution, um, but I'm fairly certain that we don't get that for the for for other um, cases. But yeah, there there it is, the iterative and recursive solution to this problem. Thanks for watching.